When you look at the family history taking practices, you see that individuals with breast and colon cancer patient have a very good percentage of them have a documented first degree family history. But then we look, when we looked at what percentage had a second degree family history, it actually dropped. So less than two thirds of patients had a second degree family history. So that's grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, nieces and nephews. Really important to understanding whether there's a hereditary syndrome there. Um, the other thing that we found is that when we looked for documentation of age at cancer cases, of cancer cases within that family, so age is really helpful because as we heard Dr. Vogelzang say, when you have a young person with cancer, that's much more likely to be a hereditary form of cancer than an older person. So it's really important that when you're taking a family history, you know the age at when that cancer was diagnosed. And that we found um, less than half of the time. When we looked at breast cancer and colon cancer patients, we saw that breast cancer patients had a more complete family history documented more of the time compared to colon cancer patients. And those differences were statistically significantly different. When we then looked at genetic counseling and genetic testing practices, we found, um, interestingly, almost a quarter of all of the breast and colon cancer patients had been referred or recommended to have genetic counseling and genetic testing, more commonly so for breast than colon cancer. And then when we then looked at those breast and colon cancer patients who met current guidelines for referral, though, that dropped and less than half of those were actually referred or considered for genetic testing. Again, the, there was a dramatic difference between breast cancer patients and colon cancer patients. Only about a quarter of the colon cancer patients were referred.